Welcome to the Ask Faleskini podcast with a guest. I'm proud to present Sarah Dyer. Sarah, please tell us more about yourself. What is your story? What do you do? Thank you so much for being for allowing me to be here. First of all, I'm very excited to be a guest on your podcast. And yeah, so my line of work is unique, to say the least. I am an intuitive tarot reader and spiritual channel. And I'll definitely go more into what that means because I know there's probably a lot of different thoughts going through other, you know, through your listeners' minds because there's so much misconceptions about tarot. But first, I would love to share how I got into it because it is such a unique niche, right? I have been reading tarot for about 20 years now. It started all the way back in high school. With That was where my interest started. And back then, you know, it was just very different from how I was raised. I was raised very Christian. And once I started just asking a lot of big spiritual questions in my teens, it I branched out to other modalities. And tarot was one of the first things, I think because at the time it was so forbidden. And so it was just kind of like, let's just play with this stuff because I'm not supposed to. And then I just kind of always had a deck on hand. It was entertainment as far as I could see for very for a very long time. And then about eight years ago, it completely changed for me. I was in a uh, domestic violence marriage and my um, then husband, he just had a lot of demons, like as far as addictions and things like that, which he didn't have in the beginning of us being together, but he did have towards the end of our relationship. And I was, I didn't know if I should stay or go because I was a stay at home mom. We had a one-year-old together. The idea of leaving was terrifying. I really had nowhere to go. And but things were, were really just escalating. And so this is actually the beginning of my, kind of my spiritual journey and my connection with tarot. Because one morning after my husband had gone to work, I was woken up to both of my dogs going ballistic at my back patio, which was strange because I was on a second floor apartment building. And I thought, well, that's very weird. You know, what could they be barking at? Because we're, you know, on the second floor. I came out to see what they were barking at. And there was a raven sitting perfectly still on my balcony. And it just stared at me. For I mean, it was probably only about 30 seconds. But for me, it was very profound of like, why is this raven not even bothered by my dogs? And I had a 50 pound Springer Spaniel that was jumping and clawing on the window, completely unbothered by it, just staring at me. And then it flew away. And so it just prompted me to look up, what does it mean if you see a raven? Which correlated perfectly with the death card in tarot. And so it also correlates a lot with the phoenix, which so does the death card in tarot. So most people think of the death card in tarot and they think, oh my God, I'm going to die or someone's going to die. That is not the representation of the death card. The death card actually represents transformation and big changes and chapters closing so new ones can open, which is also very similar to that phoenix where it dies and then re, um, comes back through the ash. That's very similar to what the death represents. So when I saw that the raven represented the death card and, the re and it represented change, and I was already on the fence of should I leave my marriage or should I stay? I just thought, you know what, I'm going to pull up my tarot deck and I'm going to do a, a reading. And this is the first time I ever turned to my deck for anything other than just silly entertainment questions. This was the first time I came to it for a real solid question. And so I asked, should I stay or should I go? And the two cards that came up as the outcome cards, I will never forget because it was just so profound. There's 78 cards in the deck with different meanings, right? So the fact that these two cards came out as the outcome just blew my mind. If I stayed, I received the devil card, which basically told me nothing was going to change. It was going to be continue the side cycle and the pattern, and it was not going to get better. If I left, I pulled the death card, which so perfectly aligned with the raven I saw that morning. And that was really when I made that decision of, okay. And, and it wasn't just that I left because the cards told me to. It was because I already knew that was the right answer. I already had that thought of, I know I should go, but oh, maybe I should try and work it out. Even though it was getting worse, police were getting called from neighbors. I mean, it was getting to a point where I needed to leave and I knew I needed to leave. But I needed that extra confirmation that almost, you know, um, outside of myself, someone, you know, some higher power saying, yes, this is the right answer. So that way I had that confirmation of it's safe for me to go. And so ever since then, I've been using my deck for personal questions, you know, growing my business and all these other things. And 
it was in 2020 when I started my real spiritual path where like I really started figuring out, okay, what do I believe? Because I was agnostic. I didn't have a rooted belief in place. And through that journey, and it was a lot of it was healing. A lot of it was going back and, you know, taking care of like my inner child and shadow and all of that. And then that's when I got the calling for tarot to do that professionally. And I said, no way. (laughs) I said, I can't be a tarot reader. No one would take me seriously. That's not something that's actually possible. So I kept saying no to it over and over again. I want to say probably for a solid six months, I kept saying no when it kept coming to me. And then I was in a position where my main income went away. And clear as day in the midst of my panicking, I heard, go work on your business. And I knew exactly what that meant. And that was enough of a push for me to say, okay, fine, I'll just see what happens. And honestly, finding tarot has been the best thing I've ever really found as far as work-wise, because I feel like I found myself. I feel like when I'm working with clients, not only am I seeing the profound um, difference it's making in their lives, I'm also feeling like I'm making a difference too. And for the first time, I actually feel like I'm good at something and it just comes so naturally. So Finding tarot was a journey for me. Like, I I can't make this stuff up. It just happened. But, you know, the journey of being a professional tarot reader has even pushed me to grow even more. And I've learned so much more about myself, about my beliefs, about how this this tool is so misrepresented. And that's another reason I love to talk about it on, on podcasts, because so many people think tarot, they think fortune telling, and they think what Hollywood will try to sell you. And it, it, in truth, it's a really beautiful self-reflective tool that allows you to get in touch with yourself, that allows you to get in touch with your higher power, whatever that is, because I don't think that there's any particular higher power you have to work with, with when it comes to the tarot. It's just all about faith and having that clarity and guidance given to you when you need it the most. So that is a little bit of me and my backstory and how I got into it. That was amazing. Let me just um, explain for our listeners what is the difference between intuitive uh, reader and a schooled reader because there are different schools that teach how to present everything in terror but when you are an intuitive reader um, you get so the intuitive reader gets information let's say from a source or from a different reality and can adapt to the uh, the client much more because it has intuition, it gets much more info than just, so the cards basically um, are just triggers for additional information that they download. You also uh, mentioned that you're a channelist. How does uh, that work? So that actually goes perfectly with what you're describing with being an intuitive. So when I read for, for someone, it's a combination of the card meanings, the card placements, and what else I'm receiving. So sometimes in the middle of a reading, the way that I would read a card completely changes. And at the, it's funny because the first couple of times that happened, it freaked me out. I didn't know what was going on because I was still so used to kind of reading just the meanings of the cards that I knew. But then I, but then I started trusting it and just sharing the way that I was feeling it. And then I would get that validation of, okay, this is how they're meaning. To, this is how they need to hear it. So as a channel... A great example for this is um, I was at a bachelorette party. So I do one-on-one sessions and I also do events. So people hire me for parties and corporate things and things like that. And I was hired for a bachelorette party. And it was a really cool experience because everyone was sitting on everyone's reading. So normally at events, they'll put me in like a corner and I'll work with someone one-on-one. But in this particular situation, I had multiple people that were sitting around listening to the readings that I was giving. So it was kind of like I had an audience and most of the readings were just landing. And I mean, people were crying or they were really, you know, it was, it was really meaningful with all of them. And then this one woman sat with me and she was very stoic. (laughs) There was not a lot of response to the things that I was telling to her. And, And basically I think she was asking about what her purpose was. And a lot of what I was getting was you're overwhelmed. There's not really a lot of space to work on your purpose. And she was just very, there wasn't a lot of reaction from what I was saying. And that, I don't need that by any means, but it definitely helps if I don't, you know, if I don't have that validation of, okay, this is making sense to her, then it's, then I just, I've learned to just keep talking because again, it's not for me to 
to edit or whatever else. And usually even when no one gives me that validation by the end of it, they're like, oh my God, that made so much sense. I never would have known it when I did the reading, but you know, it all landed in the end. So I'm, I'm doing the reading for her. I'm getting nothing from her that's telling me that any of this is nailing it on the head. And then all of a sudden throughout my reading, I kept hearing the word checklists, 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 checklists. Like it just kind of kept dropping in my head and to the point where I finally said, you know, I'm not sure why, but I keep hearing the word checklists and the whole room broke out into laughter. And then the woman I was sitting with finally also broke. And she's like, checklist? Me? I don't know what that's about. You know, and basically she only lived out of checklists. Like she felt like she couldn't operate if she didn't have a bunch of checklists. So basically what I was getting was not only was she overwhelmed to the point where she had no space to really work on her purpose, but unless she added checklists, I mean, unless she added like work on purpose to her checklist, it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so either she needed to figure out how to work without the checklist or add it into her daily checklist. But it was just like, it made so much sense to her. But to me, I'm like, what does checklists mean? You know, so during readings, I'll get sometimes get random words or I'll say phrases. I'll be reading a, about a card and I'll say a phrase I normally wouldn't say for that but it's a phrase that the person I'm sitting with is very familiar with. So that's kind of how that channeling piece fits in is I'll just certain ways I'll say things or do things or words will just come in that don't make any sense to me, but it totally resonates with the person I'm sitting with. That's amazing. What I wanted to ask you, you mentioned corporate events. Can you explain a bit more about corporate events? How is this going on? Are these just uh, team buildings? Uh, how, how can a, uh, company profit of your abilities for example uh different when they're getting together to build a new product or new service how can they benefit of your services yeah so far when i've done corporate it's been so i guess the, the most recent example i have is i did it was a very cool event i did a uh tarot event at ucr which is a university here in in california where i'm at and they had me come in for an event where they were um, allowing students to work on manifestation and vision for where they're going. And so I worked with uh, several students who wanted to come and sit with me and ask questions about where they were going in their lives. So, you know, not all students used it for career. Some of them used it for personal things like that. But that's where the UCR had me come in was to allow um students to work with me and see where they're headed and what they need to know around like what could be holding the back or are they on the right path or you know are they stepping into the calling that they're really listening to or are they just doing what they feel like they should be doing you know what I mean so that was one great example a lot of the times when I have corporate people bring me into the into their space it's usually for their customers I've, so far other than the UCR event a lot of the times it's been, oh, we're doing an event and we want to offer our, our customers something special. If, you know, they come to our booth or something. So that's been most of my corporate events. But UCR was was unique in the sense that they brought me in specifically to work with the students. Okay, that is amazing. Uh, and you also mentioned that you're doing one-to-one -one readings also. And yes. I would like to um, um, challenge you a bit about our podcast okay can we can we check what is going on with our podcast and uh how this will progress um and what i would like to uh, establish here is how should a business person ask a question to get the correct answer so how how focused do we need to be do, do this need to be an open question do this need to be a closed question what 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 do you what would you say? How how, how should we, for example, for our podcast, uh, will there be new people on our podcast uh, as a guests? Will there be a, a team? Because now everything uh, is a one man band. I'm doing everything right now. <laughs> and uh, is there any monetization in the future? How will this go about? Can can we check that? Yeah, yeah. So um, I can definitely do a, a small reading for your for your podcast and so we can see the energies around it. But to answer your other question about the best ways to form the question. So I don't like to work with the specifics or, or especially predictive type readings. I don't do that because I personally believe the future is not set in stone. And I believe we create the future in the present. 
So what we do now creates our future. And so with that said, a lot of what I do is more like, what do you need to know now to get you where you'd like to go? And, you know, also what comes through sometimes is, oh, maybe this isn't the right field for you. Sometimes I'll get that too, where I'm like, well, maybe there's some other things to explore because this one's just not doing it for you. But so we can definitely work at like, look at, is this the right place for me? Or this job versus this job. I've had a lot of people come to me with, I have this really great position now, but I'm being offered this other position. And so I can look at the energies of, well, this is what you are looking at now. And this is what you'll likely look at if you take this other job, like the energies of each. I don't ever like to tell anyone what they should or shouldn't do because I feel like that's totally the call of the client. So instead, I'll tell them the energies around each thing so they can make the discernment. Um, so with you and your reading that you're requesting, um, so with the, I would suggest with this one, maybe what do I need to know around my podcast or what do I need to know? Or maybe what, if I want to grow it, maybe what's holding me back or something like that to help you get, kind of get specific on what you need to know around getting it to where you want it to be. I wouldn't necessarily be able to tell you if there are more guests. I might, there are some cards in here that, that I think I, if, you know, if intuitively it comes to me, I can say, oh yes, you're, it's going to boom with guests, but a lot of it's going to be more like, what do you need to do in order to really thrive? And, you know, things that likely, and don't be surprised if it's something you already know, because I hear that all the time. I'll hear people tell me, oh my gosh, I knew that. This was something I was thinking about like two days ago. And it's not because I know everything. It's because I'm the, I'm the conduit. I'm the channel. I'm the interpreter. It's just, I'm picking up what I'm picking up, what you need to know now. And most people think I'm going to tell them something they don't know. And instead of tell them something I shouldn't know. Okay. So if, um, it, so the important is that the open questions are the best no yes no question and tarot is not a substitute for the lack of decision making it's just information to support your decision making or client's decision making uh, and it's not uh, doing any decisions instead of the client so it just uh, can help with more educated decisions, uh, let's say, like that. Yes, exactly. And another thing that tarot tends to do is, from a, and I've heard many people tell me this over and over, it's like it shines a light on the main focus, on where you really should be putting your focus that maybe you haven't been doing so. And, and usually it's something that you already are aware of, but you're not filing, like you're kind of not ready to fully embrace it, so you're ignoring it. You know, so it tends to just get like an, another example is I'll have many people tell me, oh, my gosh, that was like a mini therapy session. And I'll tell them, no, this is this is where you learn what you need to take to therapy. This is where you learn what you need to focus on. And so it, it could be a great tool to helping get really clear on your biggest blocks, on the things that you need to focus and work through versus kind of feeling lost and not sure where to put your focus. So, yeah, it does. It, it does allow you to get more clarity and insight on the situation and yourself in ways that it's it feels very like it meets you where you are so wherever you are in your in your business for instance it will meet you right whatever you're already going through it'll meet you there and then give you like guidance and invitations from there okay so i'm ready let's do it all right perfect so um does the question what do i need to know around my podcast does that sound like a good yes yes that question okay question. Okay, so I'm just going to do my, my smaller reading just for the sake of time, but we can always dive more into it if you'd like. Um, so I have a, I pull cards on what's working for you in your podcast, what's a challenge area in your podcast, and then your higher self message overall around helping you know your podcast thrive. So the first thing that I really love, what's working for you in your podcast is the Knight of Wands. Um, this is the picture if you want to see it. Yes. So this is saying that you're already very authentic. So when it comes to showing up in your in your podcast, in the topics that you that you approach and the guests that you have on and the way that you express yourself as the host in this, like you you feel like you're very much um, you're very much 
plugged into your own authenticity. And that feels very good to you. I feel like this may have taken on the task of being a podcaster was probably a little bit scary to you because now you're in the spotlight doing the thing that's very different. <laughs> Most people are like, what are you doing? But for you, it just felt so authentic. And so you that you're just like, okay, yes, this is it. I'm going to put a lot of my energy and creativity into this because I love it. It lights me up. It's like you're um, basically, what is that? Um, creating the beat to your own drum and it feels really good. And so the first thing I'm seeing that works for your, your podcast is that you are very authentic in it. And higher self is like, just keep listening to that authentic authenticity. Don't feel like you have to do it the way other podcasters do it or other people are telling you you should do it. It's really about doing what feels good and right to you. And especially in that creative side, because a lot of the wands cards is all about creativity and passion. And so higher self is like, hold on to those things and keep standing out. And I think that that's the scariest part is as this is, as a society, most of us are taught to conform. Don't stand out. That's scary. That's dangerous. But with your podcast, you are standing out and you're not shying away from it. And higher self is like, yes, keep doing that. A challenged area for you with your podcast is the is the high priestess, which I find super interesting because it's basically saying that when it comes to, I want to say the direction of your podcast and like maybe when it even comes to getting views or more, more listeners and things like that, you aren't fully listening to your intuition around what to do with it. So the high priestess, she's very intuitive. She's very much, she gets those gut feelings of what she should be doing, or she gets pulls in a certain direction. And because it's coming up in the challenged area, it is saying that you're not fully listening to those gut feelings that you get. You might be like, uh, I'm going to go with the statistics or I want to go with the logics here, even though you might intuitively be feeling being called in a different direction. And so I would say with this, pay more attention to those little inklings that you get. Like if you get a calling to like maybe put out a certain type of advertisement or if you get, um, or maybe if you're even being called not to advertise, but just focus on the heart of what you do and this but having that organic growth, but it is basically saying that you already kind of know what you should be doing, but you're doing the opposite. <laughs> and so when, when I get the high priestess, I always like to recommend if you do get those gut feelings, the first thing that can help you start to trust your intuition is write it down. I like just write it down because this is what I'm getting. I'm just gonna write it down. I'm not gonna do anything with it. I'm just gonna make a note and then see how it plays out. And then maybe think, okay, I can see how if I did that, it may have things may have turned out a little bit better than they did. So then the next time you get the gut feeling, you write it down and then you take action. And then you kind of write down, how did that work? How did that play out? So then you have a paper trail because intuition, while it's so powerful, it can be really nuanced. And a lot of times we can talk ourselves out of why it worked out or try to you know make it logical instead of trusting that that intuitive message was actually just you listening to your own inner guidance so i will say when it comes to your podcast like yes you have this really authentic streak to it which is just beautiful but make sure you add in your intuition too because i feel like you have certain inklings that you're not fully embracing or listening to and then your higher self message overall is the hierophant which I really, really love because it does tie directly into why it might be easier to not listen to your intuition and listen to maybe what's what you consider more logical or practical. Because the Hierophant, the invitation around this card is actually changing your belief system. So as kids, as children, we're indoctrinated with a bunch of conditions and beliefs. And, you know, and then we become grownups. And a lot of times those beliefs are still underneath everything. And it's really hard to choose to listen to our own inner, gui inner guidance when we still have those inner beliefs that are very loud. So for instance, you know, if someone's in business and they're trying to switch from a nine to five to an entrepreneurship, they might be like, I can't do that. I have to do nine to five because that's the way you do it. That's the way that you operate in society. And then having to release those beliefs and go, wait, I can do it differently. And so I feel like when it comes to your podcast, especially when it comes to listening to your intuition with the hair font here, I feel like you have certain beliefs around your intuition that makes you feel like you can't fully embrace it. Some older beliefs from childhood or um, usually it is childhood where it starts at, but you're really being invited to look at those beliefs and kind of peel through the layers and feel like, okay, 
this belief feels good to me. This belief, yes, I'm going to keep this. Oh, this belief, no, that, that can go. But really kind of figuring out what aligns with you. Because the hair font, it's all about learning how to listen to yourself, listen to your own inner compass, own inner guidance, and let go of society's compass because they're very different. Society's is beliefs. Your own inner compass is your intuition. And so I feel like that's kind of the helpful guidance card for the priestess, the thing that's going to help you tap more into your intuition is looking at your belief system and figuring out which ones need to shift, which ones need to go entirely, and which ones actually feel, you know, authentic to yourself. So as a whole with your with your podcast, I mean, I feel like you're right where you're supposed to be with the Knight of Wands here. It's very passionate for you. It's very authentic. You really, really enjoy it. Now it's more like, how can you surrender a little bit to the more practical, logical, and lean more into your intuition as far as the growth and reaching out to more people? Thank you very much. That is exceptional and uh, I, I think it's spot on. So uh, I believe our listeners got now how um, the tarot reading works. Uh, even if you're not a believer, uh, you should uh, reach out to Sarah and try because uh, you saw this is uh, a small reading. She also offers uh, more structured, uh, extensive readings. Uh, uh, I, um, she also gives you a report on the end, and it's uh, a real insight in what uh, is going on, at, uh, as you uh, saw right now, and in uh, what you should be focusing on. Um, she said that, that it's not a mini therapy session, uh, it's only tool for uh, that will prepare you for the therapy, and I would strongly recommend you. So, Sarah, where can our listeners and viewers reach you? What is the, how should they start communication with you? Yeah, absolutely. My website is uh, www.spiritjourneycollective.com, all spelled out. That's where you can find all my services. And as you mentioned, I offer one-on-one -on -one services. I also offer something called the Alignment Project, which is more in-depth and has that PDF document that you mentioned. And then I'm also on Instagram at spirit underscore journey underscore collective. I'm also on Facebook and you can reach all of that from my website. And then I also have a podcast of my own called Spirit Journey Collective as well, where I, I interview very much like you do. I interview people from all over the world about finding their purpose and what it feels like to be in service and, and doing what they love. So that is, and you can find me there on YouTube and all the places you find podcasts. Thank you very much. Before we leave, is there any trade secret that you can share with us? I would say, um, sorry, you said trade secret? Trade secret, so like if okay. you have a secret, like tarot reading, what should we be uh, focusing on? What should we pay attention to? Yeah, so I would say that if you want to dabble with tarot, whether you do it on your own and by your own deck, which you 100% can do, or whether you work with someone directly, I would 100% work on questions that are focused on you. When you ask, I get a lot of people who do come to me about other, asking about other people. And I mean, I can tap into their energies and things like that, but I'm really a big um, advocate of focus on yourself because you're the only one that control what happens in your life, right? So I love to really encourage to focus on, if you ask about, even if you ask about other people, how is this person impacting you? How is this relationship impacting you? Is this a good or bad, you know, impact for you? Or if it's, you know, is this the right path for me? But really focus on what's good for you and keep it on yourself because then there's a lot more self-reflection. There's a lot more personal invitations that helps you grow now where you're not really getting muddled with what everyone else is doing because what everyone else is doing is their own path too. And so you can only control yourself. So that, that kind of self-accountability, I really like to encourage, especially when it comes to tarot and whether it's with someone else or you know, whether you're reading for yourself as well. Sarah, thank you for the reading. Thank you for incredible story. And thank you for all the insights for our listeners. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And I really love the podcast that you're putting out there. I listened to a few episodes and I think that there's a lot of great wisdom in your podcast. So thank you for having the platform as well. <laughs>